Wait a minute, Matt. Good morning, sisters and brothers. Good morning. I'm yet another rainy day, but we'll make the best of it. We're all learning how to swim well. <laughs> we have a very, very special morning ahead of us this morning, where we have guests who have come from afar to be with us. And I'm looking for Art. Is he right here? Who is going to tell you all about it? Come on up. <laughs> I have the mic here. There you go. Yep. Uh, all right. I'm so I think most of the people here know, but I'll go through it anyway, because some may not be fully cognizant of what it has. But about a year ago, we started the program here at St. Andrew to uh, support the relocation of Ukrainian refugees into our county. And we have since relocated two families, both on MDI, that's just where we found housing. We've not found housing in the Ellsworth area yet, although we're looking. And the second family is here with us today, uh, and they will be playing the music. Um, Sophia will be playing the prelude and postlude, and then Sophia and Yulia her mom will be singing during the uh, during the offering so you're in for a treat and the, the little one on the side over there is Solomia and Solomia is five and will be starting in kindergarten at Connors Emerson uh, in the fall so anyway so uh, and I hope you'll stop afterwards uh, one one thing is the postlude Let's, let's sit through the postlude, which we normally take off and go do fellowship, but let's sit through the postlude today because it's something special. Okay. All right. And you do want to hand that to your wife. <laughs> Lee wants to. There you go. Hi there. I think everyone knows we had our annual yard sale yesterday, and I just wanted to let you know that we feel like it was a a great success. Um, it was to benefit our Good Sam Fund. All the proceeds from it will go right into the Good Sam Fund, and we made somewhere over $1,800. So we'll be replenishing the Good Sam Fund. I want to thank everyone who contributed items to it, who brought baked goods for the youth and family bake sale. They made $159 so far, Bailey, something like that. $167. $167. Yes, and what's left from yesterday is still for sale that you can buy and enjoy during fellowship this morning. So again, thank you everyone who brought donated items, everyone who shopped. Special thank yous to everyone who came and helped set up and was here yesterday to mingle and socialize with, with our shoppers. And um, we'll be packing up after fellowship today, starting to pack up, and we'll be here tomorrow morning if anyone has an hour or so that they could give and feel inclined to do that kind of work. We'll be here about 10 o'clock. So thank you all very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any other announcements I should ask that anyone else would like to bring forward at this time? Lee wants to say one more thing really quickly. Okay. Yeah, we'll let you do that. There you go. I think I forgot to mention there are plenty of things still out in the fellowship hall. So please, after church, feel free to shop. There'll be a cash box available. It's all by donation. Just oh, I'm, put I'm your money into the cash box, and we appreciate it all very much. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Go uh. on.
可以啊。Let us rise for the confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us in your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is God of the Fertile Fields.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. A reading from Isaiah. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song. 
and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Psalter lesson this morning is Psalm 65, and we'll read it responsively. <clears throat> You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be fulfilled. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you blot out our transgressions. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, or so you provide for the earth. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. I'd like to invite the children to uh, join me uh, down front for the message. Okay. Well, good morning. This it is summertime, and many people like to spend time at a lake or a beach. I have many fond memories of going with uh, my parents on family vacations to the beach, and. Let me ask you a question. What's the one thing, the one ingredient that you need to have a beach? You have to have lots and lots of uh, Well, that's that's true. You you have to have water because the water comes in, but I was thinking of sand. You have to have lots and lots of sand. And if you're, but if you're at a lake, if you're at a lake, you need lots and lots of water. That's true. You, build, you need billions and billions and billions of little tiny grains of sand and billions and billions and billions of little drops of water to have a lake. Another question, let me ask you, how does it make you feel if you were one of those tiny grains of sand if you were if you were the only one if, or if you were one of those drops of water pretty insignificant right pretty insignificant it would make you feel like gee i'm too small or uh, you know i can't do anything because I'm, I'm just too small. And sometimes we think we are too little to do anything to be of value to God. But God doesn't think that way. God does not think that way. He made each of us unique. Would you look at your fingertip? 
Look at your fingertip. Hold it up and look at it. Did you know your fingerprint is the only one in the world? It's unique to you. You're the only one that has that fingerprint. And God made us that way. God has made us, God knows us, and God loves us. He considers each of us to be precious in his sight. So each one of us is, is part of God's creation, and God wants, wants us to spread God's love, to offer our love, our compassion, our kindness to everybody else in the world. So uh, think about that, and thank you for coming up today. Appreciate it. Appreciate all of you for listening. Our second reading for this morning comes from Paul's letter to the church, one of his letters to the church at Rome. A reading from Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their mind on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of the sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the thir 13th chapter. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. And they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. 
Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> the gospel reading for today has Jesus talking in parables. He is teaching from the prow of a boat because it is the only place he can find to sit. So many have come to hear him, to learn from him, to touch and be touched by him, there is no space left in their midst. So he steps into a boat and speaks to them across the water. If the crowds have come that day for a lecture on practical theology, then they are disappointed. What they get instead are more like poems, or better yet, images of God's kingdom, as familiar as the crops in their own fields and the loaves of bread in their own kitchens. But now with a strange new twist, Jesus seems to be saying that these ordinary things have, have something important to do with God's purpose for them. That these things that they handle every single day of their lives are vessels of some sort, illustrations of some truth that seems clear to them one moment and hidden the next, like seed flung to the four winds, like weeds growing in a field, like buried treasure, like a net let down to the depths of the sea. Jesus' parables conceal his meaning even as they reveal it. And some say it was how Jesus stayed out of jail. He could have been arrested for talking heresy and treason after all. But for talking about seeds and thorns, good soil and bad, not likely. By speaking in parables, Jesus could get his message across without saying it directly, so that his followers smiled and nodded while his critics scratched their bewildered heads. And so he speaks in parables, so that only certain kinds of listeners can hear him, those who listen more with their hearts rather than their heads. The parable of the sower is a familiar one to most of us. In it, a sower casts seed on four kinds of ground. Jesus says the farmer goes out into his field. Does he carefully remove all the rocks and weeds? Does he plow the soil into neat, straight furrows? And then does he put the seed into the furrows, carefully covering up the seed with 
maybe a half inch or an inch of soil, each seed about eight inches away from every other seed. New. Jesus says this farmer simply goes out and with no preparation or care starts slinging seed. Well, once the seed germinates and it is time for the harvest, the harvest is rather disappointing. Most of the seed has been wasted. Some of the seed has been thrown onto the roadside. What on earth did the farmer expect by that? Much of the seed has been eaten by birds where it was not sufficiently covered by the soil. Other seed thrown into clumps of weeds has been choked out by the weeds. The amazing thing is that, that there is a miraculous harvest. About a quarter of the seed takes root in good soil and germinates, some bountifully so. Jesus calls this an amazingly rich harvest that brought the farmer joy. Don't you find it interesting that the sort of farming that I would call a failure, Jesus calls a success? He sure looks at things differently the way I look at things. If I were hearing this parable for the first time, my initial reaction would be, what a waste. There appears to be a great deal of waste in the kingdom of God. A great deal of seed is being flung in all the wrong places. I don't like to waste anything. Look, life is too short as it is. Why waste time? My mother hated waste. She was of that generation that saved paper clips, saved rubber bands. Like lots of other people, she loved to recycle things, use things again and again, over and over. Waste not, want not, and all of that. Furthermore, I believe in efficiency. I like it when planes and trains and buses keep to their schedules. I make sure I always have something to read when I go into a doctor's waiting room. I was listening to a guide from the Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens recently. She said during the last ice age, a gazillion years ago, Glaciers carried most of Maine's good topsoil down to what is now New Jersey. That's why New Jersey is called the Garden State. <laughs> Since there is very little depth of soil in coastal Maine, most of us would think twice about planting in ground that is full of rocks. But not this farmer who went forth to sow. Another, another response to this parable is that it causes me to ponder what kind of ground I am on with God. I start worrying about how many birds are in my field, how many rocks, how many thorns. I start thinking about how to clear my field and turn it into a well-weeded, well-fertilized field for the sowing of God's word. Then I realize how the odds are three to one against me. Those were the odds in the parable after all. And I began thinking about how I can beat those odds or at least improve upon them. Maybe I should clean up my act. And that, in fact, is how many people interpret this parable, as a call to improve one's life so that it has a happier ending with all of the seed, or at least most of it, falling on rich, fertile soil. But there is something lacking with that reading of the parable. 
Because if this is what it is all about, then it should be called the parable of the different kinds of ground or, or different kinds of soil. Instead, it has been known for centuries as the parable of the sower, which means there is a chance that maybe we've got it all backwards. We hear this story and think it is, it is a story about us. But what if we are wrong? What if it is about us secondarily, but primarily about the sower? What if it is not about our own successes and failures and birds and rocks and thorns, but about the extravagance of a sower who does not seem to be phased by such concerns? If this is really the parable of the sower, then the focus is not on us and our shortfalls, but on the generosity of our maker. Here is a prolific sower who does not obsess about the condition of the fields, who is not stingy with the seed, but who casts it everywhere on good soil and bad, who is not cautious or judgmental or even very practical, but who seems willing to keep reaching into his seed bag again and again and again, perhaps for to all eternity. This sower seems intent on covering the whole creation with the fertile seed of truth. Perhaps then we should center our attention on a creative and inventive God who flings seed everywhere on good soil and bad, confident that there is enough seed to go around. This is the time of year when many people love to display their gardens. It causes me to think about how God created the world. Why didn't God create just one species of flower? That ought to be enough of a miracle. But no, God did not stop there, creating flowers, all different colors and shapes and sizes. Yet few of the world's flowers are seen by many people. None of us will ever live that long or travel that extensively to see them all. There does seem to be a sort of extravagance built in to the grain of the universe. Some people might call it wasteful, but Jesus calls it a divine wonder. And then I think of the Bible, 66 books in all. Not one book, but 66 books compressed into one. Through Scripture, God has said so much to us on so many different subjects, on so many diverse occasions. Yet few of us will ever read through all of those verses of Scripture, much less comprehend all of the Bible. Some might say, well, you, you need a more efficient operation. So we hire ministers like me to plow through the Bible and reduce what we have read to to force four spiritual laws or three basic principles. But then we are reminded that God is bigger than all of our reductions and generalizations. There is a great deal more to be said and more to be thought. And then I start thinking of the guy of the down and out guy who came to church wanting a handout. Part of me felt a fiduciary responsibility to not waste the church's money. Part of me wanted to find out if he was truly in need and to make sure that if I gave him money, the money would be used only for the proper purpose. Then I remembered 
that Jesus never checked out people to see if they were of good character before helping out a person in need or even healing a person. So the other part of me said to just start slinging seed until the sack was empty. Let those who have ears to hear, hear. Amen. Let us declare our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and he descended to the dead. On the third day he arose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Guide your church, O God, to sow seeds of forgiveness and righteousness on good soil. 
Direct your people to proclaim your love in this congregation and throughout the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Sustain your creation, O oh God, by sending favorable weather, causing trees and fields to grow, protecting waterways from pollution, and instilling in all people the need to be good stewards. Hear us, O oh God. Maintain peace among all people, O oh God, and raise up lawyers to work for justice in the courts, advocates to speak for the downtrodden, and politicians to work on behalf of the common good. In particular, we pray for the people of Ukraine. <clears throat> we ask your power at work for those whose lives are being torn apart, both under assault and for those being forced into violence beyond their nature. nature. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Heal those who are sick, O oh God. We lift before you now particular situations or people, aloud, silently, or by chat. <laughs> Guide healthcare workers to care for those who suffer scientists to conduct life-saving research, and counselors to care for victims of sexual abuse and exploitation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Answer the prayers of those gathered in worship, O oh God. Protect those who travel near and far. Accompany visitors to this congregation and nurture our faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Inspire us by the faithful departed, O oh God, examples of your embodied love, whose confidence in the resurrection guides us in living lives worthy of the gospel. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share readings with those around us. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace, Sydney Alphonse. Peace, Peace Church. Are you the one? You're Joey? Joey, I'm Joey. Are you the one in the ball. accident? No, my father. It was your father. Okay. Is he okay? No. Yeah. Morning, Peter. <laughs> Morning. Peace the Lord be with you. This is Thank you. We'll continue now with the offering.
Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people. In the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good.
rest. This is the body of Christ. <laughs>
this body of Christ. in the parking lot or at home take and eat and drink for this is the body of Christ this is the cup of salvation broken and shed for you amen May we stand for the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now to the end of the age. Amen. Amen.
Nice to meet you.